Welcome to Mr. Levitt's video tutorial. If you're in my class, this is definitely going to help you out with your homework. If you're not, I hope it does help. This tutorial is about what I expect for full marks, drawing Bohr diagrams, energy level diagrams, and Lewis dot diagrams. So let's do this. Okay, so what we have here is the element carbon. Now carbon has 12.01 as its atomic mass. Here's its symbol, a big capital C, and it has the number 6 for its atomic number. Now first thing that we want to figure out is the number of protons. Now the number of protons is equal to its atomic number, so 6. We want to know the number of electrons and that also is 6, as stated by our atomic number. Number of protons, oh, what is this? Neutrons here. It's important that we know the number of neutrons. So we take the atomic mass and we round it up or down, So and that'll give us the mass number. And so what we have here is 12 as the mass number. We take the mass number and subtract it by the number of protons, which is the atomic number, and we have six neutrons. So the first step in drawing a board diagram is we draw the nucleus. So here's a nice circle for the nucleus and we inside the nucleus as you know uh, is only the protons and the neutrons. So we have six protons and we have six calculated neutrons for the nucleus of carbon. Now we know that carbon is in period number two on the periodic table. Period number two means it has two shells or orbitals. It has two energy levels. And so what we have here is, I'm going to draw one shell here. That's the first shell. And second period means two shells. Now what you do, what I tell my students, and you'll remember this if you are my students, um, is there are maximum number of electrons that you can have in each period, in each energy level, in each orbital. So you take a look at period number one, and it has only two elements, hydrogen and helium. So that means there are only a maximum number of two electrons allowed in the first shell. Okay, So I'm going to do two dots here representing our two electrons maximum in the first shell. Well we have six electrons. We just distributed two in the first shell which means that we have four remaining electrons and we distribute them as following. Remember one, two, three, and four. Now we know that carbon is in group number four, which tells us that there are four valence electrons, which is what we have. The four, or the electrons in the outermost shell, which is defined as the valence electrons, is one, two, three, four, corresponding with our group number. So that is a Bohr diagram for carbon. Now, an electron level, energy level diagram is very similar. Uh, first thing we do is we draw our um, nucleus, right? So we have our nucleus, and what's inside the nucleus? For carbon, there are six protons, and there are six neutrons. Isn't that beautiful? That's so nice. Uh, what I tell my students is underneath of there, I want the symbol. I want you to draw a carbon symbol, which is a capital C. And instead of drawing the energy levels or orbitals or shells, what I want you to do is just put a dash for the first electron energy level and put a dash for the second electron energy level. This will tell us, uh, well this tells us that it's in, because it's in period number two, that means there's one it's in the one period number two, one first period, second period. And 
what we have to do is basically count the number of electrons in each period. So we go back to that same rule. There are two elements in the first period, which means there are maximum number of two electrons allowed to fill that first energy level. Remember, you have to fill each energy level as you go along. So there are only two electrons in the first shell. And how many in the second shell? Four. So there we go. Um, what we have here is the energy levels, first level, second level, first period, second period, first orbital, second orbital, shells, whatever you want to call them. This is an energy level diagram for carbon. Now the last thing we have to do is the Lewis dot diagram. This is the easiest one. Lewis was genius. He said, you know what? All that we really care about are those valence electrons. These four here, or these four in the outermost shell. So he said, cut through all the extra stuff, and all we want to do is write down the symbol, which is carbon, and we are going to draw little dots uh, for each of the valence electrons. What group is carbon in? Group number four. How many valence electrons does that mean? Four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. That is a Lewis dot diagram. Okay? So in the Bohr diagrams, we're drawing the shells, circles, as per period number or levels, energy levels. Energy, en electron energy level diagram, we just use numbers instead of dots, instead of drawing out the, the, uh, the shells. And for a Lewis dot diagram, the only thing we want to draw is the number of valence electrons. That's all that matters. Now, even though that there are six electrons, we only are bothering to draw the valence electrons. So a quick hint with, for that is to find out what group it's in, and then that's the number of electrons. Now remember, by groups, you have 1 through 18 on the top of your periodic table, but we are only concerned with the ones in Roman numerals, and usually on most on most of the periodic tables, that's a horrible I. On most of the periodic tables, you have 1A or 2A or uh, 3A, all right? All the way to, uh, how do you do that? VIII, -I -I, all the way up to 8A. And these are our noble gases, eight electrons. So for a Lewis dot diagram for something that's a noble gas, what we would have to do, let's pick argon for instance, draw the symbol, and because it is in group 8, 8A according to the Roman numerals, argon, Lewis dot diagram, would look like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If you're in my class, remember, this is how I want you to draw your Lewis dot diagrams. So, I hope that helps. I hope this is clear enough. If you're doing my homework right now, feel free to use this. I hope this helps.